up variation of the deck. Bats. And there's a tailed on a, I believe it was a super I, scoop up. Uh, Looks like a diamond and pearl edition of uh, super scoop up. And yeah, the stream should be back up now, so let us know. Let us know in the chat. Yeah. For all our YouTube viewers, this is irrelevant to you, but <laughs> hope you can enjoy the match. There's an Ultra Ball for a Water and a Cholera. So it looks like Jason is on the Bats plan, similar to, as we saw, uh, Chase Maloney, Trevor Reed, and David Cohen all playing. I personally like the uh, Slurpuff deck a little bit better. I think if I had to play a Toad deck, that's what I'd be playing. Yeah. But the Bats deck is certainly powerful. I always lean towards the more consistent version, so Slurpuff is very appealing. Definitely. <laughs> As a person who likes dirtily control decks that just kind of sit there and do nothing, watching Jacob Van Wagner win regional is just kind of a work of art. Oh, I have no cards left in my library. Hmm. I will... Lysanders. <laughs> oh. Draw them well, all again. We'll just play the game again. Yeah. How about that? <laughs> and there's an enhanced hammer and a super scoop up heads. Jasmine's going to go ahead and reset that. Jirachi. Yeah, social... She needs okay. Yeah, she doesn't have a tool in hand. I was gonna say she needs to uh, activate Jirachi before she yeah. evolves or attaches a tool yeah. to the Garbodor. Yeah, so Jasmine in a pretty commanding spot. I don't necessarily think you want to use your scoop ups on your Jirachi there, but yeah, interesting that she's gonna choose the Sycamore here. She has two Crushing Hammer in hand. I probably would have and a computer search. Yeah, and a computer search. Well, I might have. I'm hmm. not. I'm not sure what her thought process is. Um, I would have just gone for the end. Saving those crushing hammers is it will, possibly uh, good. It's just because she has the headringer, so you're kind of hoping to keep Jason off the attack for as long as you can. Jason uh, only has two cards in hand, so I'm not sure that I would have taken an end, but I don't think I yeah, just would yeah, have played yeah. any of those cards. Yeah. Uh, you know, ha hammers are pretty... I mean, I guess her, her uh, logic is probably that she doesn't want to get locked next turn. Right. Uh, like you said, she does have the head ringer, though. So a uh, lot of things would have to happen for her to get... Yeah, I might have just gone for a Calrus, I guess, if she plays that. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, it's just this kind of... Uh, the worst case scenario for Jasmine is uh, Jason draws double colorless and zero sick or something and right. is able to lock her out and she gets punished for keeping those cards, but... I'm not sure. It's an interesting decision for sure. Yeah, she's going to choose to keep an enhanced hammer there. Looks like she has a float stone, so can already stop the powers. Yeah, it would definitely attach that float stone to that garbage door. I don't see any reason not to. And she hmm, chooses not to. And Jason takes a draw step. Gonna go ahead and take a look through Jasmine's discard pile. Jasmine playing Acro Bikes, which is a card I haven't seen too much in uh, in in uh, Seismitoad. But I guess it seems good. It's a uh, it's an item, so it's probably not the best for this field. But so she gets DCE uh, Zerosic away. Jasmine's DCE. But uh, Jason has no passes the turn. No attack. Taking some poison. There's the float stone turning off the any possible abilities, including Jirachi's, but I don't think that's going to be too relevant yeah. for Jasmine anymore. There's a random receiver. Sycamore. What she, just, uh, what she decides to do. It uh, doesn't have the energy in hand. Probably play out her hand a little bit and uh, Sycamore. Yeah, DC. I think she's in such a strong position now that she wants to keep the train alive as long as possible. Uh, does she not have any Ultra Ball in the hand? I thought she had some no. Ultra Ball. Hmm. I mean, she could have played the laser as well to try to put the size of a to sleep. But it, it's not really a huge deal. It's just these little tiny things. Yeah, and there's the 
Oh, so there's a miss. Oh, gosh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Boy, two two <laughs> head ringers. Feel bad. And the double colorless. Wow, I didn't think she had it. And now yeah, yeah, yeah. we're going to see. Uh, thankfully, Jason. Uh, thankfully, Jason has one energy already on that Seismitoad, so he's just going to need to draw a double colorless. But definitely not what he was expecting. Yeah. And now an end coming down. Going to go make Jasmine go to four. And uh, three headringers is quite a bit for any deck to play right now, correct? Uh, I have I think these Seismoto decks generally play quite a few. I think Jacob played two mm -hmm. in uh, Oregon, so I don't think three is unreasonable. And if you accurately predict the metagame of being uh, either this, or I mean, it's good against Verizon. It's good against almost every deck, I guess, but particularly against Seismoto, uh it seems pretty good to set them behind a full turn as long as you're not locked yourself. And there's laser. There's a crushing hammer too, which seems super important here. Yep. And that's a head. Yep, so that's a big, big head. Oh man! Setting Jason back even more turns. Uh, the interesting thing, I think, in, in, in this deck, seeing things like uh, Headringer and Crushing Hammer remind me of how in Stage 2 decks, uh, in the old formats, a Catcher or a Pokemon Reversal into knock out their basic, it basically just skips their turn. Every, you know, everything, now Jason's going to draw his card, and unless he has a zero stick, which he already played one, uh, he's just going to have to attach and pass again, and it's just like, it's just basically like Jason just took another turn. And yep. One of the risks, I guess, of... Of playing decks like that, but I mean, side throw attacks for one energy. Or sorry, for a double colorless, so you think it's going to be one attachment usually, and now he's just so far behind. No abilities either. Um, having the Garbodor against this deck has to be huge. I mean, that's multiple cards in their deck that just do nothing. And there is the other Zero Sig again, choosing to uh, remove the double colorless from Jasmine's Pokemon. Seems fine at this stage, like, he's passing with 80 on his Seismitoad, it's gonna go to 110 at the very least. Yeah, you may as well limit the damage she's doing if you can. Yeah, if that was a fresh Seismitoad and you had the energy in hand, I can see that play working a little bit differently, but... Unfortunately for Jason, that was not the case. Mm -hmm. And there's the Versus Seeker for the Lysan- or for the... Sycamore. I'm just a float stone to draw to because why not? And trump cards. Uh, probably fine. I mean, I don't. I might have just. Well, I don't, know. I, I don't actually know. I guess Jason does have two zero six in his deck, so he could blow, he could remove the float stone from the Garbodor. Yeah. He's gonna be more focused on getting rid of this double colorless energy, though. Yeah, definitely. If Jasmine can keep the flow going. Unfortunately, she won't be able to just go ahead and pass this turn, mm -hmm. so Jason does have a turn of items if he has them. I think he only I think it's his fourth card in his hand. It looks like he has quite a few, actually. Let's see what he can do now. Yeah, he might be able to... If he gets a super scoop of cards here, that'd be very, very nice. Um... In fact, I could put him back into this game. Since he also got his Zero Six back, he can match uh, Jasmine's double colorlesses that she got back. And here's the scoop Tails. up, and it misses. Goldbat does nothing, and a laser is ahead, so nice. that's step one to, to getting the advantage here. Playing another laser, and then just setting to Juniper. And there's another super scoop up. Yeah, it's the one from Majestic Dawn with Piplup on it. And this is a pretty big flip. And another yeah, Tails.
Another Zubat and the water. water. Only two more energy and that Seismitoad is going to be able to attack. <laughs> and just have to pass the turn. Uh, not the worst turn of having items, but not the, not the best either. Yeah. And there's a head, so Jasmine does wake up. She draws a scoop up as well. So you, if you're going to stick a more this turn anyways, you might as well just play both of those scoop ups in your hand. and uh, Both tails, alright, so that's, that's a good sign for Jason. I don't see a way to attack. Yeah, no energy in hand for Jasmine. I do see that crushing hammer, which could set uh, Jason back even more. Yeah, let's see if she can hit this flip. And it is a heads wow, so just again resetting. Jason's turn last turn was actually pretty strong, so not quite as devastating as usual, but uh, he's still so far away from attacking. Yeah. And I think if I'm Jasmine here, I'm just going to go ahead and Ultra Ball away both of those Verbanks in my hand, mm -hmm. thin things down a bit, search for another size or toad, whatever, it doesn't matter, and just try and maximize my chances of drawing double colorless. Oop. Looks like we had a malfunction with the camera. I'll, I'll fix the angle after the match. It could be improved a little bit. All apologies, folks. Jason grabs another toad. Uh, at least this one won't have a head ringer on it. Yeah, it seems smart. Uh, you know, maximizing your chances. If he has a DCE yeah. here and can has a scoop up or something for the toad, it, he could crawl back into this game. Mm -hmm. Not that he's even that far behind, I guess. Uh, Jasmine was just in a leading position, and if this toad stays in the active and gets knocked out, Jasmine's gonna take control of the game. And there's the muscle band to protect the toad. I don't see a super scoop up or a DCE. Yeah, the Toad uh, getting KO'd going into Jasmine's turn is really rough. Yeah, that's the thing that I think is really shifting this in Jasmine's favor. Yeah, uh, Toad's low damage output makes it fairly difficult to come back from uh, 6 to 2 prizes, it seems like. But uh, anything a little better than that, it seems entirely possible to come back from. Yeah, it looks like Jason got a little overzealous there, tried to take 2 prizes himself. <laughs> And there's the DCE. Unfortunately, that Asthma Toad is going to end this turn with 120 damage on it. Yeah. So hopefully Jasmine can find a way to super scoop it up or some other action, but... Yeah. That's a, that's oh, there's, there's the escape rope, so... Uh, pretty perfect. I mean, at this point, Jason has to decide between letting his Zubat potentially get knocked out or letting his toad take damage. Like he wise, wisely chooses a Zubat. Yep. Uh, the Golbat has enough HP that it usually doesn't matter. Yeah, it's a Crobat too, correct? Oh, sorry, no. Crobat, yeah. yeah, yeah. So has enough a lot of work to KO that with a toad. Yeah, and it's not like, you know, if she takes the KO here, which she doesn't even necessarily have, yeah. but if she does take the KO here, it's almost as much work to knock out that Crobat as it is that uh, Seisma Toad. Yep. And I do see a random receiver in Jasmine's hand, so I really think she should just play out all the cards she has. Random receiver for that Juniper. Oh, she already has a second more hand. Okay. And this seven's going to be pretty important. I think she's going to be looking for Muscle Band here, or a laser. I think she's less muscle willing. Muscle Band's much better. Yeah, she, she's less willing to use lasers, but I think she would use lasers to knock yeah, it out yeah. here and just take she the prize. She just wants to have that muscle band for when uh, Jason's able to quake and punch. Yeah, and she does have the uh, crushing hammer in, his, in her hand as well, so if Jason yeah. doesn't hit the DC here, he will be in trouble. Uh, there's a the knockout wisely going into that crowbat. Drawing a card for his turn. Looks like it was a Colorus. And... Have to imagine that if he had the DCE, he would have attached it, but there's a 0-6 to knock off Jasmine's DCE. 
And yeah, he just passes the turn. Yep. There's a muscle band. Uh, it doesn't look like Jasmine. Oh, she has a sycamore, I believe. Yeah, it looks like she has two sycamores in hand, but her other cards are good, you know, two yeah. enhanced hammers and a crushing, although I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I mean, for, for one, I think she has to play a second more here, but even if it were a closer decision, I don't think that the hammers are worth keeping, because if Jason right. rips a DCE, he has the protective yeah, size of Toad matter. already. She lifts the DCE. Yeah, no DCE from her. She does hit a laser. Oh, and an acrobike as well. I could mm -hmm. get her a DCE. Opts to take a random receiver and dump a Lysander. Mm, flips heads on the laser. Let's curl back to sleep. I might have kept that Lysander if I were Yeah, Jasmine. I'm not sure about that one. Especially I if you're going to be doing damage to the Crobat, it becomes a viable win condition. I also don't know if she has a uh, Verse Seeker in hand. She, also, mm -hmm. she obviously has a full place it in her deck, but that could matter as well. So Jason plays a Colorus for five. Hopefully he's able to actually get something going. Yeah, he's looking for switch effect. Oh, he attached a DC already. Oh, nice. So he okay. just needs to get the Crobat out of the active position. I missed that. All apologies. Yeah. And there's the super scoop up. This is going to be a big one for him, and Tails. it is a Tails, unfortunately. <coughs> Passes the turn. He wakes up, so if he survives this turn, he will have... Oh, but oh. there's the <laughs> there's the hand stammer. Jasmine kept there. Oh, the double colorless. All right. All right. And that's, yep, that's, 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 game. that's game. Wow. So Jason was just never, never really in that game. He had a few glimpses of being, yeah, uh, you know, maybe starting the comeback. But, punch off. but yeah, the Jasmine just had, had it locked up. As always, On the Bubble is brought to you by Top Cut Central. Check out TopCutCentral.com and use the promo code BUBBLE for 10% off your order. Uh, they have Pokemon singles. They have a buy list even. They have um, all the sealed product you'd need. They can't keep the Primal Clash boxes in stock from what I've been hearing. Uh, they're just flying off the shelves. Accessories, other card games, other board game accessories and such. So definitely check them out at TopCutCentral.com to support everything we do here. The interesting thing, uh, because we've been watching so many Toad Mirrors today, and there's not all that many interesting thing in to things in Toad Mirrors, is that you know Jason's going to opt to go first, which is correct, I think. I think that going first is always better, but it is unfortunate because uh, it allows Jasmine to have the first Quaking Punch still. Right. And it kind of, you know, in a normal match, going first is usually an advantage, but in, in this match, and even against Toad in general, it can hurt sometimes. I know I've seen players... Ops to go second versus Toad, which I still don't think is correct, but Just I can see that since train it's of thought. it's technically a one energy attacker, uh, it's not a huge deal to get your energy attacked one off first. It's still better to go first, but it's uh, definitely viable to go second. Definitely. And Jasmine... Oh, she did get a basic. Okay. Um, Jason Mulligan. But Jason though. did not. Uh, so as for long-term viewers of this stream, earlier today we were talking about the most times we've mulliganed. I said, I believe it was six, and then you said probably five. Um, a Twitter user, I don't have the handle right now, said that in the finals of a gym challenge way back when, he mulliganed nine times and then played a copycat on turn one, which can be devastating. Toad versus Trubbish. 
Top deck is a water energy for Jason. Attaches a DCE. And there's the end. And of course, going first with your energy attachment also means you're susceptible to uh, Zerosic, Crushing Hammer, and Hand Stammer. All that. Yeah, and then definitely. And an attack in response as well. So Jasmine has to, because she didn't start with Seismic Toad, has to work for her Quaking Punch a little bit more. Yep. She has the DC and Ultra Ball in hand, but currently no way to switch. She has an Acro Bike. As far as I can see. Jason's got a really nice start here. Gets some Jirachi. Uh, has a Zubat on the bench. Another Toad. So there's the Enhanced Hammer. We'll see how long it takes for either one of them to get an attack off. Acrobike dumps a super scoop up and finds head a head ringer. Very nice yep. combo setting setting Jason behind already. Random receiver will find a Professor Sycamore most likely. possibly get another head ringer here and just do basically the same thing she did the first game. Yeah, she can ultra ball the uh, enhanced hammer Garbodor away for a size yep. toad. Attach a DC to it. That's so efficient. Mm -hmm. It makes me happy. It is. Now, the real trick is if that Sycamore was a Maxis for psychic types, <laughs> you could bring back the Garbodor, draw five, attach a tool to it. Spicy. So switch effect or super scoop up here. None of that. I th is that a super scoop up? Yeah. There's a muscle band to protect. No, that's like another a sick of more. Different art for that card. Yeah, yeah, it's almost impossible to tell. Right, Jason does. <laughs> gets <it> is playing <laughs> the DC. That yeah. Again. <laughs> this is smart, I think. He, the thing he's afraid of, uh, either way, this turn is going to be a crushing hammer or an enhanced hammer. So he might as well attach to the bench one and give himself the highest likelihood of drawing a switch or super scoop up or whatever and being able to lead it off. Yep. And there's a muscle band to protect the... Oh, there's a super screw up too. This could be pretty big. All right, that's a head. Nice. So Jason is going to be able to quake and punch with muscle band protection up. And this is really the first action in the game. You know, Jason's going to take a little bit of an advantage here. Sort of. He won't be able to kill that Shrubbish unless he gets a laser. And Burbank. Yeah, it's going to have to deal 50 to the it. trainer lock first. Uh, Jasmine's hand does not have a draw supporter. Though. It has a second more. Oh, it does have a second more. Yeah, it's the third card. Sorry, my bad. If everyone just agreed to play Professor Juniper, this wouldn't yeah. be a problem. Yeah, come on. Come on, guys. So she just plays a second more. Nothing else she can do, really. Bunch uh, of unplayable. Trubbish is pretty stock active, so... Yeah, there's actually just no way. I guess she could attach a DCE to it. Yeah. Which she does uh, have two in hand, so yeah, it might be worth it, but she decides yeah. not to. I agree with that. If uh, Jason had the Zerosic the next turn, that would have been not great. Yeah. Oh. Mm. And there's a... Uh, that's really nice. Gold bat for the knockout. Yeah, that's that puts Jasmine in a really tough spot. Uh, I think she actually probably sums up the one with a muscle band there. Uh, just to yeah. avoid a 
Head ringer. There's a super scoop up head, I believe. Probably deciding between. Yeah, it takes the Jirachi. And getting rid of that Travish means uh, Jason will probably have access to his bats for the entire game. Which, uh, it's definitely an advantage over Jasmine. Oh, definitely. Jasmine's just not going to be able to search her deck for Pokemon much anymore yeah. this game. And we see the DCE muscle band drawn, so that second uh, Seismatar is going to be fully built up for Jason. There's an Ultra Ball. Another a little bit. See so Jason playing that versus Seeker to avoid the uh, Quick and Punch next turn. Just kind of going under it and getting a supporter. Didn't see what he drew, but I assume it's a Sycamore slash Juniper. And there's the Quaking Punch. Yeah, when Toad Mirror gets to this point, it's pretty face rolly. You just kind of announce Quaking Punch. Each turn. Yeah, I think that. And obviously, Jason is paying attention to bats too, but. Yeah, I think that like Jason will try and find his bats. Jasmine will try and set up a Garbodor so Jason can't. But besides that, I think it's just going to be the math around Quaking Punch. Uh, both of them are locked. Jasmine's not going to be able to win the race via Verbank or but sorry, via Hypnotic Laser or Muscle Band. Um, neither of them are going to be able to super scoop up. So at this point, it's just. Dealing 30 and 50. Uh, Jasmine's never going to be able to attach a tool to a Charbush anyway, even if she found another one. That's true, that's true. I guess you, at that point, you just might as well not play them so they can't yeah. get bats out or something like that. And there's a goal bat. Alright, so we can all just take a nap while they announce Quake and Punch. Yeah, honestly. Many, this many is probably actually row. like one of the downsides yeah. of Seismatoad is just that it makes for very boring boring matches when you're playing the mirror. And as we saw here, I would say, would you say half the field of people with positive records are playing oh, Seismatoad? Over half. I'd say probably like 80, honestly. Really? Yeah. <laughs> You see Jason attaching that water, getting prepared for the grenade hammer. Um, often just kind of the last attack that you announce. Just quick and punch for as long as possible, and then when you can take the knockout and pull super far ahead, you do so. Yep, and uh, Jasmine's Seismato goes up to 130. It'll be KO next turn by a quaking punch. Yeah, luckily Jason has multiple turns to find the second energy. You can just quake and punch for the knockout here. Quaking punching for the knockout. You have the grenade hammer available. Always reminds me of leaf guarding with the jump left <laughs> from heart gold. Yeah. It just feels so good to just not have to. <coughs> There's the Jirachi. I guess you should try to Sander up the other toad. Hope there's not an energy. I'm not sure. I assume her plan is to just Lysander up the other Seismato DX and um, prevent Jason from being able to do something like knock out this Seismatoad and then um, grenade hammer the other one. Obviously, that'll take another turn. Yeah. But. Choosing not to play the Lysander actually and just quaking punches. Ooh, and there's oh, a Zerosic. This is gonna be This is gonna be tough. If Jasmine we just talked all about how the mere match, you know, neither player will ever get to do this or that. And if um, Jason is already ahead on board on prizes and Jasmine has to break the lock, which she does not, but if she did, it would just be devastating.
you're as not it were. to call it too early, but when it gets in a situation like this, it's just kind of waiting for the end. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, we are trying to, you know, it's sort of attempting to avoid Saizmatoa, but so much of the best players yeah, are it, it's a doing it. We don't vast majority. We don't necessarily want to stream players with lower records, and I know that people don't like to watch Saizmatoa Mirror matches. People don't necessarily like to watch players at one and two either, so it's kind of a hard, hard decision when you have yeah. such a heavy meta game like this. Jason draws like a million cards off of Getsis. Yeah, and let's see. So it's Jason's turn. He's gonna. That toad's gonna go to a hundred. Yeah. After the yeah after the um, yeah. crowbat. Yeah. So it looks like. I mean, Jasmine is going to. Oh, and up there's a second energy. So if I'm Jason there, I, I don't know how many water energy he plays, or what his hand is like, but I honestly might just... Mm. Alright, she's gonna, guys, I'm gonna go ahead and concede. Uh, time is winding down, not sure exactly what it is, but we see probably half the players are done playing, maybe? A little bit less, and we've seen both of these games go pretty long, so we could be in trouble for our first tie on stream. We will see. Yeah, the uh, format for this regional is standard format. Uh, 50 plus 3, best of 3 Swiss rounds. I'm not sure what the top 8 will be. I assume 75. I think that's what uh, we're Yeah, with. it's usually right around 75. I don't think we'll be under any time constraints either, so. Yeah, I think not. Uh, the Oregon Regionals that I streamed last month actually did 55-minute rounds, which I used to be a pretty big advocate of. Uh, my big argument was that players, once they know the clock, the last 10 minutes of the game or so, they will start to play faster and finish yep. the game faster. But after, after experiencing the Oregon uh, stream and talking to a lot of people, I actually think that it's just not right. I think that the problem, more than anything, is that you're you don't have time to com uh, complete three games, and the p when people go to ties, it's things like this. Yeah. It's start. I, I don't know what the time was like. I we could finish in time, but it's starting game three with ten minutes left and just knowing you can't win. So I think that you know even sixty minutes probably alleviates some of the pressure, but I don't think you can really change things as the format is without seventy five. Yeah, especially with these low damage decks. Like yeah, exactly. And then 75 is adding another 50% of the time. Like, I, I, whenever I'm doing coverage, I assume that each round will last about an hour after delays and such. And, I mean, turning that into an hour and a half after 75 is just so much harder on the staff, judges, and the players. So I'm not sure there's a, a great solution besides maybe just designing cards that finish games quicker. But to be fair, this tournament, it hasn't been that big of an issue. But I think a lot of it is just that players have gotten used to it as well. has been taking a mulligan. Is that Mega Gengar on the sleeves? Yep. That's pretty neat. Alright. What's the weird, uh, like, stuff around it? I, some pattern like they made game? up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't know if it was, like, I a think. video game thing. You see? Jasmine taking her second mulligan. Yep. And. Yeah, not much to really say. I don't know 
Uh, I think that Jason actually showed that if he can get the bats going before Jasmine gets the grabber door, those are relevant. We saw yeah, the I think bats three just put him ahead in the quaking punch race. So yeah, I think we saw three prizes taken. We saw the prize in that trebuchet, and then it helped with the size toad knockout. Mm -hmm. And Jasmine's third mulligan. And these mulligans certainly don't help the time constraint issue we were talking yeah. about as well. It's probably been an extra. Yeah, a lot minutes. of these decks are low basics and yeah. low damage. It just takes a lot of time. It's pretty interesting that we haven't seen many of the Flareon decks in the field. Yeah, at least I expected to see a lot more tables. Flareon. Um, some of our friends were even talking about playing it, and I thought yeah. that would be more popular. Especially after its performance in Florida, and it's kind of the deck that is kind of like tricky and interesting that you'd think people would want to play, you yeah. know, but I, I guess not. Just as a reminder, that's a fourth mulligan. Uh, as a reminder, uh, the top eight for this event will be standard, so no switching to expanded like in regionals. And yeah, e going even though he's going second, uh, four extra cards from Jason here is going to be huge. Just digs him that much deeper into his uh, getting the quaking punch on turn one. Oh, I suppose Jasmine could have something to disrupt it. And... So okay, there's a side turn. Right. The game's gonna start. Alright, double bat toad on Jason's side versus a double size toad on Jasmine's. Acro bike. Huh? Ditches. I think she grabbed receiver there. Sorry? I think she grabbed receiver there. Uh, she grabbed uh, crushing oh, hammer. Okay. I don't think it's going to matter because this receiver is going to hit a sycamore, but. Yep. She's just going to have to dump this whole hand to sycamore. Not yeah. The, not the best, but you know, kind of whatever. Yeah. And in that spot, you just have to acro bike and hope to hit something that's relevant, like a DCE or muscle band. But yep. much oh. there. That's irrelevant. All right. And does not see the energy. Uh, wait, acro bike. Okay. You can't see. Come on, acro bike. Hype. She does have two muscle bands, I think, so she's going to be protected. Or did, did Jason even play? Headringers, have we seen them uh, out I of him? I don't think he does. Yeah, I don't think we've seen them out of him, so might not be something to worry about. So, this one ends the turn with no supporters in her. Oh, I guess hand. she doesn't have muscle band, sorry. Yeah, no supporters in the hand, passing the turn. That other side of the code is protected. Heads on laser. Jasmine not in a great spot here, but I can't see the contents of Jason's hand if he if he whiffs the uh, quake and punch here. It's really anyone's game. Grab another little bit. Mm. Yeah. There's an end. So actually, Jasmine caught a lucky oh, yeah. break there. Yeah, that's nice. Getting end into hopefully a playable hand. Mm -hmm. but, uh, Jason's able to get the first quaking punch off here. It's still a huge advantage. Yeah, definitely. Especially as Jasmine's uh, sensory is asleep. Yep. So it could just stay that way, or Jasmine could with the DCE. Jason seems to be speeding up his play a little bit. Yeah, I think the clock's going to be affecting both players. He will not yeah. get this Quaking Punch this mm -hmm. turn. Patches the basic water versus Seekers for... Uh, I didn't and see that I end, think. I think. He's going to swap to another a little bit. Yeah, you don't want those guys getting knocked out for no reason. Mm. 
this sleep flip's going to be pretty big. Nice. This one does wake up. Uh, having another turn of items is really nice for Jasmine. Definitely. Although I don't think she has. She has Acrobike as her only draw card? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh, oh she's a Verse Seeker. Okay, okay. okay. Floatstone's yep. pretty so nice swap there. Swap those toads around. Acrobite. Trying to fish for the double colorless. Discards Ultra Ball hits an unknown. That was a double colorless actually. She nice. hit with the hit with the Acrobike. Grab Sycamore with Versus Seeker. Tash is a DC, and suddenly Jasmine is yep. slightly ahead here. She'll get a knockout on this Zubat. Flying the laser, she plans to stick it more anyway. There it is. Definitely looking for a Trubbish here. That would be really nice to be able to try to turn off those abilities while you can. I believe she discarded both of her Garbodor. But, uh, oh, really? it does play trump card, so, you know, in the long run, maybe. Yeah, I just don't, I think after, line. like, the first five turns, I just don't think those are possible if, if Jason yeah. starts getting quaking punches off. Mm -hmm. She's just gonna attack for the KO here. Gets Six. the quaking punch off first. Very nice. And now that that other size, my toad is, isn't poisoned anymore, it just has 30 on it, not a huge deal. Like, yep. she finds the second DC, she basically has two fresh ones up. Yep. She doesn't even really have to use that size, my toad at this point. It could just be a free retreater or whatever. Yeah, definitely. Not having the muscle band is obvious, obviously a downside, but not the end of the world. Jason plays another size, my toad, and ends. I'm not sure I'd even play that size right now if I were him. I understand that he wants to hit the energy off of the end of six, but I think the the fear of uh, getting it head ringered might be just more important. I think I'd rather have another bat line available since that's uh, kind of your big advantage there. Yeah. And Jasmine is only going to four here, so Jason is going to pull ahead on card advantage. Oh, five. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry. And if he doesn't hit the energy, it's gonna be pretty rough for him. Go ahead and evolve into the gold bat. Deciding where to put it. So we'll hit the active here. Yep. You might as well. And he just ships the turn back with yep. no quaking yep. punch and a crushing Ooh. hammer is drawn for Jasmine. It's okay, it's a oh, miss, so. Yeah. Not the end of the world there. There's another toad, DCE, and a band. So, still got a lot of game to play, but Jasmine is definitely leading here. Yeah, and she'll take another prize off of the goal bat, so... Yeah. Going down to four prizes. No supporter in her hand, though, so that could be a way that... She won't way need that one she for needs. a while. Yeah, she can sit back and just... She's basically got her deck online, Yeah, so. all, the, all the things that she needs. Yeah. But he's Jason with a Juniper in his hand, so he's going to have another shot at that. At that Quaking Punch. It's a Crobat. I have to imagine you just hit the active here again. Yeah. I guess. Um, like I'm trying to think if there's any math that would change that. I do 53 times to the other one and hit it with 30. Yeah, I don't think putting the crowbite yeah, damage there actually out. changes anything, but it does put a little bit more pressure on Jasmine. Yeah. Uh, just that's <laughs> going to be loaded up with energy. We see the four, the whole play set of Seismitoads on board. <laughs> yeah, I think it's actually correct to put the three on the bench one because you still have to attack the active Seismitoad three times to KO it. With Punch. And there's the double colorless going to 120. 
Trump versus a drum. Might as well play it. I don't think it's going to come back to hurt her at all. Yeah. And she just has to quick and punch. The play that Jasmine does have is if she can top deck an energy uh, during only this exact next turn, she can retreat the Seismitoad and go into the fresh one, which will kind of reset the race, as it were. Um, actually, not reset it, but will actually put her way ahead. Though the bats out of Jason do kind of decentivize that. Yeah, having two fresh toad available for Jason makes that a little tough as well. Definitely. I guess it's erosive for the double colorless. Ooh, That's sorry, huge. That option is oh, and time was just called. All uh, right. So time is called before Jasmine drew for the little beat. Jason has turned zero. And I think this match is going to end in yeah, a tie. There's just no way. So Jasmine goes to turn one. She has to take, a, she has to take an EX knockout this turn, uh, which I don't believe she can do. And then... It'll go to Jason's turn, turn two, and then Jasmine will finish that turn three. Most of the time we see um, players just play it out here in case there's some sort of interaction they're missing. It's only another two minutes of your life. You know, you may as well make sure you don't mess anything up. But yeah, as it stands, I don't see a way this match ends. So pretty unfortunate. Um, going to three zero and one is better than a loss, but not exactly where you want to be midway through this tournament. Yeah, it's looking like uh, we're gonna have a lot of uh, X O X. So. Right. Yeah. There's the Juniper from Jason. Second DC. Takes a knockout, and unless unless Jasmine has some sort of uh, Lugia plus <laughs> attaching an expert belt to Jason's own Pokemon going on here, yeah, I just yeah, and Jasmine probably does eventually win this game, but um, oh, I think so as well. Yeah, I mean, Jason does have the other size of a Toad built up though, which. Could be trouble, but I guess it's kind of even things out. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's the match. Going to end in a tie. First tie we've seen on stream. Uh, you know, 3 one not where you want to be, but not the worst either. We, I'm, I'm, I think that's what I'm on. 5 twos will make it in at least 5 win one So going to gonna have to play tight for these next two rounds, but it's certainly not in a bad spot. Uh, but as you saw, the match just ended in a tie. So time has been called. We should get another match going in less than five minutes, hopefully. So we will see you in just a few minutes from beautiful Vancouver, British Columbia.